Hello everybody. Happy Friday today. Uh, today I'm coming to you live because we're going to talk about cellulite. What is cellulite? Is it possible to remove cellulite, especially when you're over 40? And how can we ladies over 40 get rid of cellulite? So welcome to the live I, don't know, I still don't know what to call it. Live talk, live show, whatever it is. <laughs> My name is Nicole Simonin and I am the owner of Shape It Up Fitness. And just a little bit about me. I actually just um, was in my Word document finishing up my first TED Talk. I'm writing the script for it. It is going to be virtual, thank you to COVID. But um, it will be virtual this October coming up in a couple weeks actually. So I am just finalizing that. I'm getting ready to record the TEDx talk. So I'm really excited about that. I hope you um, will stay tuned for that as it comes around. I'm going to be doing a watch party. So keep an eye out for that. Um, a little bit of background on me. I have owned Shape It Up since 2006. And I have been helping women lose weight for the last time for 14 years. 14 years. And I actually was a professional ballet dancer and I went into physical therapy. So I was a physical therapist assistant. And then I had my son and I was like, no, I need to stay home and raise my kids. And Shape It Up was born along with the children. <laughs> and here I am today, um, still helping women lose weight for the last time. So we're going to dive into talking about cellulite. So what kind of face do you make when you talk about cellulite? Many fear it. Many call it cottage cheese, orange peels, dimples, but what is cellulite? So cellulite is most common in women and can appear as early as adolescence. Now the reason why we ladies can see cellulite a little bit more than the men is because men tend to have thicker skin. So even though they're heavier, it just doesn't kind of show through as much as it does in women. We have, the, you know, the estrogen, all the female hormones that kind of give us that feminine look and our skin is just a little bit thinner. So cellulite has the lumpy dimpled look that is most commonly found in your abs, your hips, tush and thighs. It can be found in other areas such as your calves, your arms, um, the good news is that cellulite is not a serious medical condition. Make sure you're not confused with cellulite and cellulitis. So cellulitis is actually a common and it can be a very serious bacterial infection of the skin. A little side note, when I was working um, in physical therapy, I had to do what's called debridement. Um, the patient that I was working on, he had diabetes type two and diabetes is a horrible disease to have. And especially nowadays, I mean, we know that type two diabetes can be eliminated or definitely contained, but diabetes is not something that you want to have because it just, it's a horrible disease. It's a horrible way to die. And this man had cellulitis. And what I had to do was, I hope you guys are not eating lunch at this point, but <laughs> I had to basically um, peel the dead layers of skin off of his leg. And ironically enough, it was always right around lunchtime that this patient came in. So it was either before lunch or after lunch. So lunch to me at that time was not appetizing it whatsoever. And um, cellulitis also has a very strong smell too. Um, not to be gross, but it's like rotting flesh. So. I'll leave that for you to digest. Again, I apologize if you're <laughs> eating your lunch or getting ready to eat lunch. It was kind of early, but let's move on. All right, so what exactly is cellulite? Cellulite is body fat, and it's basically pushing up to your skin. So I want you to imagine that you have your layer of muscle, right? And then you have your skin. And in between the muscle and the skin are columns of fibers called collagen. And I want you to envision something similar to like a net or like columns of nets, fibers interlaced. And these columns hold your body fat inside the columns. So when the body fat increases and it pushes against the fibers of the skin and the muscle, so like the space in between each as it, as it gets um, tighter, your body fat will push up against the fibers in the skin, which produces the dimple effect. 
So imagine if you took like um, a net and you filled it with like cheese or cheesecloth, you know, like a very wide cheesecloth, um, not real tight, and you squeezed it, you know how it kind of dimples out? That is the effect of cellulite. cellulite. So basically it's your body fat just pushing against the skin. Um, so why are we so bothered by cellulite? What are the first things that come to your mind when you think of cellulite? Feel free to pop in the comment section with that if you'd like. Um, maybe some thoughts are like, I'm really overweight, or this is ugly, or you think that, you know, I'm just not in shape, or you're a horrible human because you're not thin yet, and, you know, if you were thin, then you wouldn't have cellulite, and so cellulite can be genetic, so meaning you can be predisposed to having it, especially in certain areas. So, for instance, take me. When I was 16, I first saw cellulite on the back of my thighs and I weighed 115 pounds and I was dancing ballet, right? So fast forward, I don't know how old I was. I was in my 20s, probably my late 20s and I was dancing professionally and I still had cellulite on the back of my thighs and I weighed 98 pounds. Now I'm 5'2 on a good day, so I was very lean and almost too lean <laughs> and I still had some cellulite back there so for me genet genetically speaking I carry cellulite in the back of my thighs that's where it goes um, I will do a uh, talk on knowing your body type and how body fat is distributed in different areas um, which you may find very fascinating uh, especially when you dive into what is your primary body fat storage area I'll save that for another day though so body structure does play a part, and this is kind of what I was just talking about, but like if you're an endomorph, so an endomorph is typically a pear-shaped person, you will tend to have cellulite in your hips, your butt, and your thighs. So sitting for an endomorph will break down the fibers and make that cellulite push out a little bit more, because remember, as you're sitting, you're kind of crushing the collagen fibers. Um, Ironically enough, my TED talk that I'm doing in October is about sitting, sitting with this ease. So definitely go check that out and see some of the things that you can do to offset sitting so much. Um, basically, the talk is going to be around um, moving, and but I'm also going to be demonstrating some stretches that you can do while you're at work. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you are more apple shaped, you're probably going to see it more in your stomach. So typically the apple shaped person has um, a larger chest and a larger belly area and then they have these little toothpick legs. Uh, they just don't carry body fat in their um, tush area as much. So sitting for them is not such a big deal. It won't be as pronounced as it would be for like a pear shaped person. So how do you get rid of cellulite? So let's talk first about all the crazy things that are available for getting rid of cellulite, right? You know, we live in a society where, especially as we get older, you know, they're constantly pushing us to look younger. And when you are younger, they're constantly pushing you to look older, but not too old, right? So there's a lot of things that are available to, and I'm not saying, you know, if you want to look younger, go for it. <laughs> but here are some of the things that are offered to reduce or get rid of cellulite. So creams and lotions. Creams and lotions tend to include ingredients that are going to puff up the skin wherever you're rubbing it, making the cellulite appear to go away. So when the cream wears off, the cellulite look will return. So don't be schnookered into buying creams and lotions because it's very temporary and it's not going to really, and depending on how much cellulite you have, you know, if you only have a little bit, maybe those would work temporarily, but if you're carrying a lot more cellulite and you think the cream and the lotion is going to make, you know, more body fat disappear, it will not. The next one that I think is crazy that is out there, and it's actually been around for a while. Um, I remember first hearing about this in I was actually studying physical therapy and someone had brought this book in from like, I don't know if it was the fifties or sixties. Um, and it was called rolling and it was how to roll out your cellulite. So basically what you would do nowadays is you would take something that's like a foam roller. Um, if you're not familiar with foam rollers, they're like the, um, pull 
um, noodles sort of, but they're more dense. And what personal trainers like myself use them for is to kind of do a, like a massage on the muscle. It is not for rolling out body fat. <laughs> But basically, the theory is, is that you take this foam roller and you roll out the cellulite part on your body. So like if you have it on your thighs, you would roll this thing back and forth over your thighs in an effort to flatten out the body fat and make it appear less dimply. Okay, I, I'm hoping that sounds ridiculous to you as it does to me. This is not going to do anything for your cellulite. You are not pizza dough <laughs> like you rolling something out like that is not going to create a smoother look of cellulite for sure so the next thing which is kind of hard to say is cryolipolysis okay you have probably heard this um, I'm not gonna use the exact term um, of the company but it's when you sculpt and you freeze fat right so the theory behind this is that they are freezing the fat cells and then they go in and remove them. Now along the same lines is liposuction, which I'm sure you've all heard of, right? This is where they go in with a tool and they vacuum out the fat. Now, both of these procedures, the problem with this is the thing that they use to go in, and this is what they won't tell you, is the thing that they use to go in to remove the fat cells or to suck out the fat damages all those collagen fibers that we talked about earlier. That structure that is holding your body fat in place, they're just basically wiping it out and taking the fat with them. Now, you would think, well, that's great, but what happens is if you gain that body fat back and people tend to um, get this procedure done on their like major primary body fat storage area so if you even gain any bit of weight it's going to come back in that area if you gain weight after a procedure like that it is going to go to that area but there's no more collagen fibers there's no more columns to hold that body fat together so you're very um you don't look normal like it's very dysmorphic you're you know you've got like a lump of body fat over here and a lump over because there's no structure in your body to hold that body fat in there so um be very wary of things like that i would say definitely go you know really think about that before you even go down that road so um, interesting enough, I was looking at a cryolipolysis website and they were talking about how the body metabolizes fat when you eat, I'm sorry, it was talking about how the body metabolizes when you eat fat in food and quote, this is what they said, processed fat gets used as energy and excess fat gets stored as fat, naming body fat. So. Let me read that one more time. Processed fat gets used as energy and excess fat gets stored as fat. Now, if you know anything about how the body works, yes, they're saying the truth, but they're not telling you the whole truth because what they're not telling you is it happens with protein and carbs too. If you eat too much fat, too much protein, or too much carbs. In other words, if you eat over your caloric intake for the day and you do not burn that off, you're gonna store body fat. It doesn't matter if it comes from fat, carbs, or proteins. So websites like this are going to prey on your, you know, your desire to get a quick fix. And I just wanna tell you to pause and really think about what you're doing in that manner. Um, I know from experience, I have only met like one person and I haven't seen them in a long time who had a procedure where she kept doing, like she kept the weight off and she kept trying again. I haven't seen this woman in a long time, so I don't know what she's like now. But the problem I find is that when I talk to women who've had these type of surgeries is they regret doing it because they either are gaining the weight back because they never understood how to eat right and exercise and you know they got the quick fix um, or they're just so limited to like you know like I guess I'm kind of going off tangent here about like you know when you get your stomach um, shrunk 
you can only eat certain foods and I don't know about you, but I want to be able to eat a cinnamon bun if I want to eat a cinnamon bun. <laughs> All right, so let's get back on track. Um, so if you think that some cream or magic pill is really going to get rid of cellulite, you're very misinformed. And the only way to get rid of cellulite, are you ready? The only way to get rid of cellulite is to eat in a calorie deficit, not some huge deficit. You need to also move your body and lift weights. And that's it. That's the bottom line. Um, I know it seems simplistic, and this is, again, where I come in as a coach, because we all know we should move more and eat less, but why don't we do it? And it's the mindset part. It's how you think about food. It's how you think about your body. It's how you think about working out. And depending on where you're coming from, you could have a lot of beliefs that you know you're never going to lose weight and that surgery is the only answer and i can promise you it, it is not the mindset piece i think is so important and that is why i've really kind of shifted my um coaching one-on-one -on -one to include that because you can have the perfect workout and you can have the perfect nutritional plan set up, but if you don't actually do it or you are really like white knuckling your way through it, you will, you may lose a weight, but you're not going to keep it off for life. So don't waste your time on creams and lotions or expensive weight loss surgeries because again, typically what happens is you haven't learned the tools and the skill sets that you need to not just lose the weight for where you want to physically be, but to keep it off for the rest of your life, to maintain it for the rest of your life. So if you enjoyed this mini session, I want to invite you to jump on a quick call with me. And on this call, we're going to find out what is really holding you back from losing the weight. So if you have 40 or more pounds that you have been struggling with, or you're really ready to ditch diets and you're really to make lifestyle changes for the rest of your life, I want to invite you to jump on a call with me. You can um, schedule at shapeitupfitness.com slash chat, C-H-A-T. And um, we'll just get on a call and I'll help you figure out what's holding you back. All right, so that is all for me today. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.